Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got some very bullish news to share with you guys. First up, Ethereum has surpassed its old all-time high. Grayscale is buying a ridiculous amount of Bitcoin. Dan Moorhead reaffirms his $115,000 Bitcoin price by August. Brian Brooks has some parting words. And Uphold CEO JP Theriot says XRP is not a security and his lawyers also believe the same thing. So let's go ahead and break it down. Before we do, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, let's look take a look at the prices here. Bitcoin, $36,510. Ethereum, over $1,400, breaking through its old all-time high, guys. And look at this beautiful green candle here for Ethereum. My goodness, that's a thing of beauty on the daily chart here. And if we zoom out, of course, 2017 was when we hit $1,400 and we've broken through. And this time around, I believe Ethereum is going to new all-time highs. A month ago, I made a video talking about Ethereum could go to $10,000. Reasons being, one, institutional and enterprise adoption, but also the locking up of the ETH supply for staking. And here we have an article, Ethereum 2.0 closes in on $4 billion value locked as stakers commit over 2% of the supply. This was released just two hours ago. So Ethereum is now the third largest blockchain by stake committed and has plenty of room to grow. So it just went to proof of stake late last year and already you're seeing a record breaking amount of Ethereum being locked up. And it's just behind Polkadot, which has $10.4 billion locked and Cardano, which has $8.3 billion locked. So the rally is coming because of the supply and demand shock, but also the adoption, right? And certainly ETH has some scaling to do and some things to fix, but it's moving in the right direction. People want to stake it and it's getting adoption from enterprises and so forth. So that's why I call for a $10,000 price prediction at the peak of the bull run. You know, we'll hit $5,000, we'll have a correction and so on and so forth. And then I think we could hit a $10,000 ETH or possibly higher, who knows, right? Uh, it is the number three in my portfolio. My number one is XRP, my number two is Bitcoin, my number three is Ethereum. I know some of you are gonna be like, dude, are you crazy, XRP is your number one? Yes, we're gonna talk about it later in the video though. Let's talk about Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin with all this moving sideways right now, can break out to $50,000 very soon. As I've been tweeting and saying in my videos, I think it could personally hit $50,000 by the end of January into early February. I may be wrong, but I'm just looking at the patterns and we're in a bull market, we're seeing record-breaking demand. And uh, Dan Moorhead tweeted the following, Bitcoin historically bottoms 459 days prior to each halving. This cycle, the market did in fact through uh, 514 days before the 2020 halving. If history were to repeat itself, Bitcoin would peak in August at $115,000, uh, $212. So 115, $212 here. Uh, and he posted his respective chart that they're using with a stock to flow prediction or projection, I should say. And uh, look, it's on track. There's, there's nothing off here. And yes, you can say, well, this is not a certainty. Of course, right? When it comes to investing, there are no certainties except tax is paying capital gains tax right um but it's on track based on the data the data doesn't lie here my friends and we see record breaking demand and grayscale and square and paypal are buying up a ridiculous amount of bitcoin so here grayscale once again buys 16,244 bitcoin worth 590 million dollars over the past 24 hours which equates to 18x of the daily bitcoin mine their total bitcoin uh, assets under management now sits at 22.9 billion dollars remember there's no etf right now so they have become the pseudo etf where a lot of these Big players are going and buying and taking their positions in Bitcoin, right? Grayscale provides the white glove service. We'll buy it. We'll custody it. We'll provide reporting and insurance and all that. So that's what's happening here, my friends. That's why they're getting all the money. Not to mention, you know, PayPal is buying up a lot, Square Cash app. And that's why you're seeing the roofers, Jeffries, Guggenheims, all of these hedge funds and investment firms are coming out saying they're taking a position in bitcoin right so if you just look at uh their total holdings just keep growing it's 
pretty ridiculous how much money they have and how much Bitcoin, but they're getting the investment funds, right, from, from these big players, as I just mentioned. So things are moving in the right direction here. Very bullish on Bitcoin, guys. It's it's the new gold. It's digital gold. People are continue to talk about it. it's slow, it's scaling, blah, 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 blah. But it's not being used for daily transactions. And that's what it doesn't, it's not competing with ETH. It's not competing with XRP. Only people who are maximalists think that way. It is digital goal and that's what it is. XRP has a different use case. Ethereum has a different use case. Uh, moving ahead, guys, Brian Brooks, crypto controller. Of course, he um, didn't get you know, nominated for a second term at the as the head of the LCC, but he's done so much for the crypto market in just a short period of time. And I wanted to share what he tweeted uh, for his parting words. He says, thanks to everyone who supported me and contributed ideas over the past nine months. Here's where I think we are and where we're going. First, my philosophy, the purpose of government is to set frameworks to allow each of us to safely pursue our own version of happiness. Government should expand freedom, not constrain it. Absolutely, absolutely. Banks and other corporations are supposed to respond to demand by providing these those things people want and are willing to pay for. But sometimes institutions decide people's ideas or economic choices are wrong and then try to suppress those ideas or choices. Hence, decentralization and open internet and open financial system put power back in the hands of actual people for those, or excuse me, for whose benefit government and corporations are supposed to exist. This guy is so spot on, very smart. Also unbundling, why is it that only banks and not fintechs or anyone else have access to payment rails? Europe has figured this out. Why can't we? So essentially, and we've talked a lot about it on this channel, a lot of the bankers don't like cryptocurrency. They don't like what's happening, the decentralization of finance. They absolutely hate it because they're losing control, right? And we know why Bitcoin was created. It was out of that crash all the speculation all the things the bankers did they got bailed out they're so integrated into the government now that into the stock market it's you know really ridiculous and that was why bitcoin was created my friends to be a hedge to be an alternative that is decentralized for the people so brian continues saying i'm incredibly optimistic that our big brawling risk-taking dynamic country will continue to lead and succeed, but not by protecting powerful incumbents. Success will come with disruptive idea, the ideas that are scary but expected and even necessary tomorrow. Here's, here's a, a really good statement. Crypto, question mark, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow as M1 money supply goes to the moon. They will keep printing money and dilute your savings. All your hard work money sitting in the bank, they will dilute it. That's why you need to invest. You need to put it into something that is not inflatable, but is deflationary like Bitcoin and some of these cryptos with a hard cap, right? And Brian absolutely hits the nail on the head here. He continues saying, DeFi, question mark, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow as some banks start telling you what you can and can't do with your money. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we're already seeing that. And some of them are trying to charge you to, in other countries, to, to, to keep your money with them with negative interest rates. It's ridiculous what's happening, right? The system is failing. And I'm not saying that as hyperbole or to scare you or a conspiracy theory. It's happening right before our eyes. The data shows that's what's happening. 2008 was a big indication of what's happening. The dollar losing value year over year is a big indication of what's happening. So he continues saying stable coins, question mark, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow if we want the dollar to remain a competitive global medium of exchange. Uh, Non-depository banks, question mark, scary to some today, but necessarily necessary tomorrow if we want the economy to grow and consumers to be protected. Uh, be well, everyone, and don't be strangers. After a short sabbatical, I will be back in touch. So I hope he comes back and he gets another position. Maybe the SEC, maybe the CFTC. This guy understands crypto. He gets it. He's forward thinking. He's a, he understands uh, the innovation that's taking place. And we need him back in a government role, guys, to push the crypto agenda forward. But uh, great guy, smart guy, done a lot for the crypto market. Don't don't forget who he is. You'll see him pop up again. Now, moving ahead, guys, XRP, 
XRP is not a security. And, and this is what JP Theriot, the head of, uh, uh, excuse me, the CEO of Uphold. I've interviewed him on my channel. I've interviewed quite a few folks on Uphold. And he said, we've chosen lawyers. One of our lawyers is, in fact, the ex-head of the SEC's New York office. All of them uh, feel that it's fairly clear that XRP is not a security today. Yes, Anybody with a, a brain who's, who uses the Howey test against XRP um, would, would see it is not a, a security today. Now, I've been on the record when it Ripple first started, maybe in 2013 and into 2015, it was a security. And I think they should pay their fine for that, but XRP should not be deemed a security today because, as stated before, Hester Pierce put out the respective sandbox a project can start as a security but over time evolve and morph into a non-security and that's the nuance with many crypto projects not just at ripple and xrp right you can go down the list guys so this is important is i'm glad to see he's coming out and saying this this was an in, with an interview with greg kidd so greg kidd has an in, uh, youtube channel a uh, global id and he interviewed jp and uh i've interviewed both jp and greg kidd like i mentioned uh, greg kidd in full transparency is an investor in ripple and uphold so here's my interview with greg kidd uh let's see if i can find my interview here with uh jp for you guys i'll have to look it up but it's it's on my channel i'll link to it in the description uh great guy and like i said it, I, th I think th this ruling and everything will be in ripple's favor and this will now become the ripple test versus the howie test so really great to see uh these folk folks coming out and speaking up for xrp uh, Coinbase buys blockchain infrastructure startup Bison Trails. I like to share these types of news items with you because it shows the health of the market, that there's acquisitions and mergers and all of these things happening. That's signs of growth. And many of these folks are building the infrastructure of the market. So Bison Trails is already partnered with Coinbase through its custody service. And let's see if we can get some more details here. Bison Trails, excuse me, not trails, trials, excuse me, guys, Bison Trials, which builds cross-blockchain integration tools that link disparate protocols will become a foundational element of the Coinbase product suite, the top U.S. cryptocurrency exchange said in a uh, Tuesday blog post. Terms of the deal were not disclosed, and Bison uh, Trails did not respond for any comments. So nevertheless, guys, a positive sign for the growth of the market. You want another bullish positive sign? Crypto startup Amber Group raises $530 million of assets under, assets under management as institutions retail arrive. The crypto finance company reported a 275% annual increase in assets under management in 2020. Wow, a 275% annual increase. That's crazy. So, uh, let me give you some more details. Although institutions were the main driving force behind Amber's initial growth, especially among financial managers, family offices, and other high net worth clients, its retail-facing business has also seen significant uptake. The Amber app, which launched in September, has attracted over 35,000 signups at the time of writing. Michael Wu, Amber's CEO, tells Cointelegraph that his firm has already proven who we can provide institutional grade integrated crypto financial services. Everybody's setting up shop and raising money and they're getting the money. Guys, it's coming in. These these people see what's on the horizon and the potential to make significant return because crypto is global. It's not specific to certain countries and anyone with a smartphone and internet access can jump into the crypto asset class. You don't have to put millions into Bitcoin. You could put 500 bucks into Bitcoin and then 100 into Ethereum and uh, another 100 into XRP and you are part of the asset class. It's decentralized. There's no gatekeepers. You don't have to be an accredited investor. That's what makes it very different and the potential for a significant amount of money to come in, guys. And that's why we are on the side of smart money. We are here early buying the lows and the dumb money is going to come at the top, just like every market, real estate, stocks, you know, precious metals. So 
Uh, that's why these big players are buying up and now they're going to market the hell out of it. They're going to uh, get people to sign up and use it and, and you're going to see a lot of investments. So guys, a lot we covered a lot today. Do you think I'm on track here when I said uh, Ethereum can hit $10,000 at the peak of this bull run? What do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.